Hi, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Oli and today we are playing Saint Qatar. They look so awkward and unnatural, as if made by someone who never saw them living. Tiny chairs of torture and bells. I must say they are faithfully recreated to the smallest detail. It evokes a repulsive feeling, and I guess that is its purpose, but I'm not sure it's something God would approve of, no matter the cause. Souvenirnica Lavenyak. Ah, the drawing makes perfect sense. Lav in Croatian should mean lion. Statues and death masks of Ivan Kotar and some small-sized replicas of the torture wheel. A strange, tiny-sized tree with red leaves growing out of a head vase makes it even stranger, if not morbid. Weird executioner masks. They genuinely look old. Madam? Do I look like a madam to you? Well... You're going to make me blush, sir. Welcome to my little hut. My name's Ida. Ida Lavnik. I already know your name. How? Do I know you? Not really, but you know my sister. I was with her last night. Oh, yes, I remember now. The shy and anxious older brother, Benedek. Or should I say, Monk Benedict? <laughs> she said that? No, sir. It's just the way you looked. Why didn't you come closer when we called you? Her eyes focused somewhere behind me, with a weary and terrified gaze. It's all right. You don't have to answer. Where's Victoria? She disappeared. Oh, no. Not her. N not again. I hope she's not... another victim of the moon. Have you seen her today? No. No, I don't think so. Have you seen her today? No. No, I don't think so. Last night, did she come back after we left the square? There were a lot of people here long after that, and I was preparing to close, so... I really couldn't say. What's going on? She was seen pushing a man from the castle's roof last night. I heard about that accident this morning. She did that. She really pushed that man. Eyewitnesses saw her. Liars. Who are these people? Does it really matter? Uh, I don't know what to say except that Victoria is a good person. She looks so gentle and vulnerable. Like a butterfly. How can I help? I don't know. Maybe you can't. Maybe only God can do something. Not even God. She's lost forever. You've heard about the mayor. Heard what? They found his body in the forest. What? Who told you that? The police forced me to see it. The body was hanged from the belfry of the Church of Mary. Mutilated, disemboweled, and half-eaten by the crows. Those animals. I, I, I'm sorry you had to see that. Poor mayor. I light up a candle for him today. What can you tell me about Nermin? Never seen him, but have heard and retold many stories about him. What do you want to know? It's a small town. How come you've never seen him? Because he's one of those who lives under the moonlight, while the rest of us do our best to keep away from it. A moon ghoul. The worst of them all. What book are you reading? The Divine Comedy. I needed something to cheer me up. <laughs> so where's Dante now? Who? Dante, the hero of the book? In what part of the book are you now? Oh yes, how silly of me. He's in a dark forest and there are beasts he cannot evade. I think they symbolize something else. Sins. The beasts represent the self-indulgent, the violent, and the malicious. 
Oh, that's interesting. You know, the book intrigued me because the descriptions of where he is in the beginning reminded me of this valley. Does that make sense to you? I told this to my father and he scolded me right away. You are quite right, madam. <laughs> now all we need is our Virgil to rescue us. Where should I look for Victoria? She won't come out in the open. It would be too risky. Well, if I were you, I'd start my search in the forest. In Carcassa? Udav Mountain could be a good place to start, too. But I've never been there, so I can't give guidance. Carcassa and Udav are forbidden places, aren't they? I don't believe what they say about them. The forest is a beautiful place. The tall trees, Pepel, the river spring, and the silence. Listen. Search the forest. Make sure not to get caught while entering, and keep your eyes open once inside. You'll be fine. Who decided to forbid these places? Ironically, the same man that was found dead in the hearts of the forest, Mayor Ranko Merzel. You think his death had something to do with the decision? No, I don't know. The proof of fate is a decree that he put in place soon after taking control of the town. It's a decree that compels people to stay away from the places on the list, and to report suspicious activities and misbehavior. Such as? Blasphemous and heretical talk, to name a few. But the decree's main objective is to find and execute those against or unfaithful to God. She sounds like she doesn't approve of this. I guess it's a good thing. I don't know. You don't adhere to the law. Not in this case, at least not entirely, you know. And please don't say this to anyone, or you'll have me tortured and killed, all right? Go on, I promise. Carcassa has been like my second home in the last few years. I can't get enough of its silence. I know, I know what you are going to say. It's dangerous, dark, and forbidden. But listen to me. Sometimes it gets dangerous true and the mayor's death proves it but isn't that normal it's life it's people it's life everything here feels rotten and reeks of death don't say that and don't talk to others this way if we stop dreaming and lose hope what do we have left look i don't know if you should go into the forest i don't want to get you in trouble or killed I have no idea where you should look, really. I'm sorry. Oh, w wait, I have something here. It might not tell you where to go, but at least give you some orientation. A map of the town and its surroundings. How does that sound? Sure, thank you. Glad I could do something. Just be careful. How come you weren't dressed as a priest last night? Ah, <laughs> uh, that question. Excuse me? Oh, sorry, nothing against you. But it's the same annoying question that keeps coming back at me, like a bat flapping in circles year after year. I see October 28th on the calendar, and I know what's coming to bite me. So what's the reason? I tell everyone I can't wear it because I have to work. But the truth is... I don't believe it would make a difference if I did. In general, the ritual doesn't make a difference. Why does everyone else wear it? Because the inhabitants believe we are all disciples of Ivan Kotar, and so we have to dress like them on the day. Not just in the evening, when the effigy is set on fire, but all the time, from dawn to dusk. But what is the reasoning behind it? The dress is just a terrifying shadow of what a priest's robe should look like. There's a belief that wearing it scares off demons, witches, and other evil spirits. I guess the darker it looks, the scarier it is. I don't know. The effigy turned into ash last night. What does it represent? A demon slave of the moon god. The effigy ritual marks the end of the day of Ivan Kotar, 
People gather on the square, they pray and chant as one voice. It sounds beautiful. It's the best part. No, it's the only part of the day I love. I thought the exact opposite. It was a disturbing scene, and I felt true, primal fear. Then the mayor comes out, and everyone stops. And when the last words leave his mouth, the effigy is finally set on fire. Has anyone been hurt over the years? The fire spreads very quickly, a wide and massive whirl as if ignited from the darkest of places. No, not that I recall. Why? Oh, you mean because they stand so close to the figure? Yes, and because it could come down at any moment. It's so tall, the nearby buildings could be hit. Nothing to worry about. God is protecting them. Or at least it's what they believe. Oh, and those who are tasked with creating the effigy are given a free pass into the forest. Can you guess why? No. You haven't even tried to guess. Because it's made of black wood, plant roots, and undergrowth from Kakasa. Slaves of the moon god supposedly live or dwell as spirits if they are dead inside the forest, and so, you know, some of the townsfolk even swear to hear the wailing of demons the whole night after the fire. I don't know. Excuse me. Sure. Only dust remains of the thing that was set on fire last night. Ivan Kotar, Sanctus Patronus. It's barely readable. That must read Sveti Kotar, and that should be the coat of arms of Croatia, the chessboard. Some people, this stone is the only hope they have left. Haven, last seen on the last day of February, 1993. Young Kadia, missing his love since June. Beloved wife and mother, Melita Lavnyak, missing since October 1991 at the entrance of Karkasa. Anyone found my legs yet? Our beloved priest and friend. White and red squares, a Croatian version of the chessboard. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty confident this is a 15th century map of Europe. Everything in this town revolves around that troubling period of human history. I'd like to ask you some questions. About what? Different things. Uh, maybe you could help me? Uh, a stranger. Could you come out of the room? No, and I don't want to talk to you. Take a look at my inventory. Read some books, do whatever you want. 
I don't care about those knockoffs. And take a sample of the town's map from the desk. That way you can't say I didn't help you. But I... Stop talking. I want silence. Asom Tavruli at the top. And the other two are... Maleos Maleficarum by Heinrich Kramer and an unnamed manuscript by Herodotus. What a strange taste for books. I don't need it. I already have one. I'm not a pest. The owner said she wants to be left alone. Lots of fog in these portraits. Not quite sure if it's a stylistic choice. The emerging faces are pretty ugly and creepy. An old woman with white hair, white dress, and big white teeth. She's doing her best to look happy. It's just a mock-up of a strange tree with small red leaves and branches pointing skyward. It's missing an eye. The man who did this and put it on display here is a brainless, primitive psychopath. I'm not a thief. Slips of paper have been squeezed in the fissures between the bricks. I'm curious. I'll read one. Voices now carry, shadows take form. Oh God, have mercy on me, for I fear the thing that possesses me. A wall of laments? Inside a tavern? Take my son and husband. Just make my agony go away. Forgive me. I'm here at your feet, with you in my heart. From the day I arrived, life has been a blessing, and this town a dream. I thank you for that. We are all captives of this place, imprisoned souls waiting for our Savior. Let him descend upon the valley, save us, give us the light. Darkness, shrieking, trembling, you left me in the mine, and now I have no God. My vengeance nears. My days and nights are nearly over, so let me thank you for everything you've done. I choose to live in darkness. I choose to be safe. Yesterday, I followed a swarthy old woman into the forest. I don't know if it was an apparition. I don't know the reason why I did it. It was all blackness and silence. My heart is dark now. My soul is cursed. I can feel it. Have mercy on me, for I had such a weakness of faith. The dead are disappearing, and the believers are dying. For the love of humanity, do something, Almighty. I had a vision of Ivan Kotar. He led me into the kingdom of Ahrisak. What does it mean? My God, am I doomed?
Bind their power, prevent their progress, banish them. My shepherd, free us all. Voices now carry, shadows take form. Oh God, have mercy on me, for I fear the thing that possesses me. Excuse me. What do you want? Remember me? Should I? From last night? My sister and brother-in-law were with me. I'm not a visual man. I don't remember faces. They dissolve into fog pretty fast. So you don't remember my sister, Victoria? The two of you talked last night. Victoria, you say? I remember her glasses and name. Did you see her today? No. You've lost her? She lost herself. We cannot find her. Keep looking and seek help from God. <laughs> Or ask someone who thinks to be one. And who would be that fool? Fool? <laughs> Funny you say that, because that's how I call him too. My cousin Norrin. <laughs> the chief of police is your cousin? Dominic Norrin, the feared and respected law of the valley of Svetikota. <laughs> I've had a chance to talk with him already. He doesn't seem to know where Victoria is. That means nothing. He's either lying or you're a fool as much as he is. Was there anyone else when he talked to you? Yes. He likes that. He likes to be on the stage in front of a crowd. If I decide to talk to him, where should I go? You'll find him in his office at the police station. It's where he eats, sleeps, and fulfills his needs. Talk to him alone. He's more vulnerable without a crowd. Walk into the police station. His office is the door on the left. Just knock and tell him Davor Gorski has sent you. All right. He won't care, so you'll have to give him a good reason to let you in. Luckily, that reason is in front of your eyes. You? I don't understand. A gift. The cleaver, right in front of you. A cleaver will make him change his mind? Is this a joke? No joke. It'll wait for you here for whenever, if ever, you decide to talk to the fool. Svetikotar is a small town. Where do strangers go when they visit? Any particular place I should know of? Ah, glad you're asking. I got many recommendations. You should definitely venture into the Carcassa Forest. Its trees are magical this time of year. Then don't miss out on the greatest view of the valley. Climb to the top of the Udav Mountain and enjoy the breathtaking sight. Lastly, take a diving course at the Lake Hali. I mean, forget about people. Don't ask anyone. Just dive. Just do it yourself and enjoy the rich underwater life. Your soul will be grateful. Grateful beyond imagination if you dip your toes into the spring of the Henna River. I feel like you're mocking me. I am. <laughs> What was that huge, horrible thing that was set on fire last night? Tradition. This town has a history of blaming everyone except God. God is never to be blamed. He has his own ways of... Blah, blah, blah. I heard it a thousand times before. People around here blame strangers, good spirits, demons, witches, and even the Vatican. Everyone else except the one they idolize. The Vatican? Crazy thing for a Catholic town, isn't it? But why? And why do you say they should blame God? Look around you. Talk to people. Stay long enough and you'll understand. <laughs> Tell me about the moon ghouls. They will eat your soul and feast over your flesh. You know who they are? 
A cannibal tribe that follow the moon demons. The moon is the key. In what way? I already said too much. Seek more knowledge elsewhere. Are you a taxidermist? A what? Do you prepare dead animals for fun? I enjoy slaughtering them. I love my job. So you are a butcher? I prefer slaughter man. Why? What's this all about? I was asking myself about that poor pig and its head displayed like a trophy. You have a problem with that? It's missing an eye, and... And? I believe it's a mortal sin to torture defenseless animals. <laughs> you know why? Because you are one of them. Like a sheep who follows words and moral codes. You feel endangered, vulnerable, and mortal. It's actually the other way. I feel... You don't feel bad or sorry or sad for that pig. You're terrified because you see your own head on that wall. It's pointless to argue with this man. I have better things to do. Nothing to say. <laughs> Good. What's the story of the bricked up window you have here? Human rats kept breaking in and stealing from me. The alley's pretty dark at night, so it was perfect for them. I couldn't find out who they were, so I decided to poison the food. It worked. It was all right for a while. But then the break-in started again, and I said no more. Walls always work. They divide the sane from the mentally ill and the rich from the poor. We need walls. Thank you for the background story, sir, but I meant what's the story behind the slips of paper in the wall? <laughs> of course. Of course you meant that. What else would you be interested in after all? I keep them because they amuse me. How so? I laugh at how weak and pathetic my fellow townsfolk are. They bring me lots of joy, especially the ones talking to God. You have a problem with faith? Do I look like a sheep to you? <laughs> this is a madman. No, you do not. Right answer, priest. Right answer. I'm not a priest. I'm not a fool. Excuse me. Am I really going to take it? Good, very good, priest. Now go, walk bravely into the Temple of Law. You're bringing a gift. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It leads towards the bridge to the police station. I'm not going in that direction now. I wasn't sure I heard a voice, but I did. Victoria is here. It's dark, and my eyes could be deceiving me, but that doesn't seem to be... Who goes there? I'm Lucia. 
the owner of this house. I apologize, miss. I'm Benedict. Victoria is my sister. Who's Victoria? Rough day. Sorry. I meant Petra. Petra is my sister. I didn't know she had a brother, and that he was coming with her to Spetikotar. Nobody knew. It was a last-minute decision. So where is she now? We're trying to find her. We? Who is we? And are there more people I don't know about? Her husband, Nikolai, came as well. I was told she was to come alone on Friday, October 28th. Rented the house for three nights. Said she wants to give herself a gift for the soul. A strange woman, I tell you that. Something happened? Nothing in particular. We woke up and she was gone. <laughs> She's probably sightseeing. One can easily get lost in the beauty of the place. Lose track of time? What happened here? I didn't want to yell at you, but since you're asking, you tell me! I almost fainted out of sorrow after opening the door. Look at my bust, reduced to pieces. Somebody has to pay for the damage. Animals. You'll have to ask the warden to pay for that. We left the house untouched. The warden? What warden? Dr. Hatur? Yes, Dr. Hatur. But I did nothing wrong. Why would he come to my house? Was he looking for me? I don't know. He didn't tell us the reason, and we couldn't argue. A detective was with him. Maybe... Maybe they saw my art as blasphemous and heretical. Maybe they'll take me into the asylum. That's why he destroyed the bust in the stoop. He was sending a message. I'm doomed! He won't take further action. What do you mean? He was here for me! Why would he cause this damage without taking you in? It doesn't make sense. You think? This looks like he was just giving a warning. Maybe because of something else you did. I don't know what I did, but I can live with a warning. I'll try to be more careful from now on. Thank you, my friend. Weren't you supposed to welcome us last night? I told your sister I'll leave the key at the neighbor's, and that I'll pass by later, after the castle. You were at the castle? Sure. Did you see me there? I was there only for a brief time. Couldn't stand all those people. But how could I see you when everyone has to wear... Wait a minute. Did you go inside without a mask? No, of course not. Was she here after you came by? I didn't make it. This right here is me visiting after the castle. <laughs> you are a strange person. No wonder you two are relatives. Why are you asking all these questions? Because she stayed in the house and fell asleep. And when I came back, I couldn't find her. I don't know her whereabouts since last night. You know, if you don't trust her, you should just talk to her. But if you already did, then my only advice is to talk to Madame Vera, my neighbor. She may be old, but she never misses a thing. Always lurking from that window of hers. I can do that. If you just knock, she will pretend to be dead. She doesn't like strangers. You must introduce yourself to her. Say exactly who you are and why you are looking to talk to her. Tell the truth. I heard that she had some sort of visions of the life of Ivan Kotar, the patron saint of the town. It's what allowed her to sneak into other people's houses as a babysitter. I'll try to talk to her. And do not go knocking on the door. She hates that. Have you had any strange dreams in this house? Whenever I don't have guests, I sleep here. And guests are as rare as the sun in this town. My dreams are always great. Why? It's just that both Nikolai and I had a rough night's sleep with harrowing dreams. That must have been the demon of tiredness, not the house. You had a long drive yesterday. We opened the balcony door and found a strange mask. So it was you who broke the glass on the door? No, I, I just opened it. I promise. <sighs> Maybe those bloody crows did it. Wouldn't be the first time. It started recently. They come to the balcony, raking in mud, small twigs, and other crow filth. I tried to scare them off, but nothing is working. And they are very aggressive. I can't light a candle anymore. Whenever I do, they swarm outside and start scratching at the windows and door. The balcony is where they gather and ultimately die. It's like their graveyard or something. I can't explain it. If they don't back off soon, I'll have to start taking action. I don't want my guests to feel threatened. Do you mind if I look around the house a bit? Not at all. 
You're allowed to stay here for two more nights. Unless you want to pay to stay longer, of course. That is something you should discuss with my sister. The blasphemous basin is destroyed. I approve of the act. Hideous. It's full of dead crows. Dozens and dozens of them. This woman eerily reminds back when I could rely on her, instead of having to fear her. For some reason, someone decided to wrap the carpet and put it here. Everything is as we left it, but the crow's head is missing, and there's broken glass on the floor now. We left it on the table, with its front side facing the wall. Now it's up again, looking at me with those mean eyes. Must have been the warden who did this. What use is there in throwing books on the floor? The fireplace. It's full of dead crows. I know. I've put them there. Why? To get rid of the bodies. Why else? But I am all out of matches, so for now, they just have to lay in the cold. You don't mind, do you? No, not at all. It's your house. But you're my guest. It's my duty to make your stay comfortable. This woman and her house are beyond salvation. Never mind. It's locked. Who keeps a dead tree? The Catechism says, after an angel decides to sin, he falls from heaven and becomes a demon. Hello? Graveyard silence. Madame Vera? Madame Vera? My name is Benedek. I spent the night at your neighbor's. Could I ask you some questions? The woman that came with me is my sister. We can't find her today. Did you see if she left the house sometime after we arrived last night? Have you seen her today, perhaps? Who 
are you? I must confess that I have a hard time reading your chalkboard. All right, no need to get upset, Madam Vera. I'll do my best to read from it. My name is Benedek, and... Vera is old, not deaf. Who are you? Benedek, I'm a monk from Budapest. What do you want from me, monk? I'm trying to find my sister. Have you seen her? No, but I heard last night. After we arrived? Much later in the night with a man. What man? Nikolai? No, the one who came here earlier today stayed in the house. The warden? Dr. Hathor? Him, the man with the demonic voice. What did Hathor and my sister do? Went into the forest together, talked there for a while, then silence. Where in the forest? At the crossroad. Go straight into the forest. It's where the path leading from the town ends? Just go inside there. Once you find it, you will know. Did you hear what they talked about? No. Sounded like whispering, praying, chanting. Can you describe Hator? <laughs> what is it? My eyes were taken from me. God has his ways. I'm sorry. God has nothing on this. I deserve punishment. I deserve solitude. You still questioning my words. I am sure I didn't see him. But it is the same man that stayed in the house. The demonic voice. <laughs> I'm just curious, and please don't get upset. Why are you using a chalkboard to communicate? Piece of chalkboard. School damaged object. A present from someone special to me. I understand, but... but why don't you talk to me? Wouldn't that be easier and less painful for you? Tongue was torn out. I am eyeless and wordless. Terrible fate. I can't imagine the pain. Please forgive my ignorance. Who made you blind and mute? <laughs> No need to tell me, I just... The body of my sister. Your sister did this to you? A corpse now. She had to do it. It is my fault. Your sister? Family? What could you have done to deserve such a cruel punishment? I provoked. I need to suffer for my faith. It is all I have left. Don't ask again. I heard about your visions. I still have them. Visions of Ivan Kotar? His birth, life, the horrors of Udav, death in church. Can you tell me a bit more? <laughs> visions are mine, don't want to talk about. Excuse me. You are damaged. Missing soul you have. Excuse me? Cursed, like me, but a good man. Help me find the love of my life. He disappeared. Madam, I can't. As soon as I find my sister, I'm leaving and not coming back. Search for her at the same time. Look for him. I don't know this place. I don't know anyone here. Everyone knew my love. 
on a full moon night, he disappeared. You have to understand, it will take a miracle for me to find anyone in this valley. Uh, but tell me, what is his name? Yakov Pranger, town's former... A priest was your lover? He was to renounce his service, not faith. Dear God, I'll see what I can do. I have to go now. The path the old lady told me about. It's too dark and terrifying. All sorts of negative emotions are hitting me in this blackness, and I can't see a thing. I need light. Do you mind if I take this lamp? Huh. That dust collecting thing is here because I inherited it with the house. Go ahead, but don't forget to return it. Sometimes it gets very dark in this valley. Without a lamp, I could get lost. Darker than this? It appears to be empty. I need to find some oil to make it work. This should be enough. Do you happen to have any spare matches? You are afraid of darkness. Look into the angel's vase. Take what you find. I will. Thank you, Madam Vera. Excuse me. It's empty. 
I can see a matchbox, which I'm taking, and a strange crucifix that looks more like a weapon of sorts. I believe it could kill a beast. As long as I'm trapped in this valley, I might need it. And since Vera wrote I could take whatever I find in here, I'm taking that too. I don't need more light here. Oh my god, this is horrible. I've never seen so many. It's a dumping site. Two different kinds of footprints here. Fresh footprints. No way I can be sure one of them belongs to Victoria, but this proves Vera was right. She wasn't imagining the whispers from the woods. I wonder, how could my sister possibly know the warden? Where did they meet? He was looking for her last night before the incident, and then they talked afterwards here. Why? Something must have happened to her in the last few years. Both of our parents perished, and now our bloodline is cursed. It's not a fairy tale. It's our reality. I have to go to the lodge. Tell Nikolai I was right. He can do whatever he wants after that. I did my part. I'm leaving. No one can judge me or condemn me after... Oh, get off! Get off! <laughs> 